All right, it is hotter than a jalapeno's armpit out there. This is the duty gear bag review. I know a lot of you have been asking for this. I do read all the comments and all the emails. I do read through them. Unfortunately, I can't get back to all of them, but an overwhelming majority wanted a duty bag and a uh, duty belt review video. So here's the duty bag video. All right, so the bag I have is the 511 Wingman bag. Policing is definitely turning into a digital world. A lot of this stuff that takes up room in this bag, it's no longer necessary. And I mean that because a lot of the forms are done online. A lot of the citations for us are e-citations or they're printed right in the car. So a lot of the books and the reference materials and things like that, that's pretty much all on your MDT or your in-car computer. There's not a lot left for forms. So in turn, I'm assuming the future of gear bags is probably gonna get smaller, smaller, and smaller. This one is about medium sized. The Wingman isn't one of those huge ones that you know takes two hands to even carry out to your car, but it is efficient. The gear I have in it, for the most part, I still use on a day-to-day, -day, if not week-to-week -week basis. Also, side note, yes, I know I'm sweating like a fiend out here. It is hot all the more important reason to keep hydration in your bag. So the cool thing about this bag is it folds into three parts. The front folds down onto the seat where you have Molly gear, you can place whatever equipment you need there. The top folds up into the headrest and hooks so you can put equipment up there if need be. All right, we'll see how this works out. I'm gonna to talk to you and narrate you through the bag tour, but at the same time, take footage of the bag and what I'm talking about on my iPhone. I don't know how it's gonna turn out. The footage might be crappy, so I apologize for that, but I have to do that because I'm kind of on time constraints of using my lunch time here. Like I said earlier, the top strap connects around the headrest and it kind of leaves a vertical molly hanging space there to arrange all your gear. It's pretty cool. You can see the strap there in that vertical space you get in the bag to store equipment. And as you can see, I'll go through each of those parts with the camera, but it's pretty nifty setup. Now in the bag, you can really use it for whatever you want. There's two compartments that divide from side to side. This is the forms area that I was talking about earlier where actually I could probably take out about half the contents of the inside of my bag because I just don't use them anymore. You can see the forms I'm talking about here. This is a little guidebook that I had made. Then this was what I used to use for reports, just this pad here. And everybody's probably familiar with this. Oh, I'll get to that in a minute, a citation book. And this is what you would cut citations on. Moving to the front of the bag, I always keep my gloves up here readily accessible. A lot of times too, I just put these in the visor so I can just grab them if I need to hop out of the car real quick. I always keep hydration of some sort. I either bring water or tea or I'll buy something, you know, at the 24 seven stop and robs or whatever. You just grab something, you've got to stay hydrated. If you don't, you're going to get headaches and just feel crappy through the shift. So you got to have something like that. A big vice of mine, candy and sour candy. If you follow me on Snapchat um, or Instagram, Twitter, I always post kind of stupid little videos with candy. This is my vice, I need to give this up, but I just can't seem to yet. So this weird equipment here, I think on my patrol car tour video, I talked about this. This is the FM transmitter for my iPad, so I can listen to music and integrate uh, my iPad GPS and all that with my car because our cars actually do not have GPS or Bluetooth or anything like that We kind of get the uh, cheap version of the vehicle. I always have binoculars This is great if you're sitting on a location or if you just need to get a closer view without you know Taking your big white submarine up to a house or something like that if you need to be further away These are nice compact. It's always nice to have a little, you know, pair of binoculars in your gear bag 
on a patrol function, you're not getting into surveillance and stakeouts and all that too much. So just something small and useful that'll help you out if you need it. All the night vision stuff that's out there, I won't get into my opinion of it, but as you can see, I don't have the night vision and there's a reason for that. Just like the patrol car tour video, these are the magnetic pieces that go into the air vents for my iPad. And on my iPad, I have you know several other videos on what I use that for in my vehicle. So that's just a uh, nice tool to bring along with you in your gear bag. I put all this in my gear bag. So when I deploy out to the vehicle, I got it all with me. I don't have to go to several places or leave this in the car. I'll never see it again. But I keep it all in my gear bag so it's easy to deploy out and just throw up and install in the car prior to the shift. So again, with the office supplies, I can't remember the last time I busted this open. Uh, it has paper clips and clips. This used to be extremely important. You couldn't go without these things in your gear bag, but now with everything being digital, I just, I can't remember the last time I used this. One thing that's extremely useful in my bag, and I talked a little bit about it in my Winter Tips for Cops video, but I got all these little evidence containers. And if you go up to your evidence room or whoever handles your evidence, I'm sure you have something similar to this. I just labeled them for things that we use all the time. So these are drug testing kits. I have a, uh, I have a medical kit in here as well that just has aspirin, hand warmers, band-aids, bandages, things like that, ibuprofen, I have that in there. Also, because you can't leave it in your car, your spare change bucket. So I just keep all my spare change in there when I go through a drive-through or whatever. And then my fourth one is just my cards and contact info. If you do a business check, you just throw that on the door and say that you check the business. So I have that in there as well. So it's easily accessible. I'm not losing them in my bag. So before I get any further, just remember there's like a hundred different ways to skin a cat. My setup in my gear bag is definitely not the best way. I'm not claiming it's the most efficient way. It's just what has worked for me. And depending what type of work you run into at your agency, you could be setting your bag up much differently than mine. So continuing inside the second compartment, traffic vest, that's pretty self-explanatory. I have that so I can grab right away. Then I carry my zip ties in this sharps container. Um, it's just, I use zip ties all the time. If you're in this job, you have to kind of rig things together. So I have it in the sharps container to try to, you know, keep them all in one place and help me out when I need them quickly. Another thing I'll keep in my bag, that's kind of odd, or maybe it's not. I keep a pack of cigarettes and let me explain why. You never know when you're going to have to kind of put on a different hat and console somebody or counsel somebody or, or whatever you've got to do in this job. And I just, I have these cigarettes. These are like menthol and regular. So no matter what someone smokes, they can crush it and smoke menthol or just keep it as a regular cigarette. And I put these in here because you're going to run into somebody inevitably that, you know, either just lost someone or, you know, if it's somebody that's actually being pretty decent with you and they're going to jail for a while and they just want that one last cigarette. I have no issues with allowing that every now and then. So it's just, it's very situation dependent. I'm not one of those guys that says never do it. Uh, but these have definitely helped me in a bind kind of either connect with someone or just kind of do someone a solid and, and give them a cigarette when they're looking for one. So I do keep these in my gear bag. Okay. I know the lighting kind of sucks, but this is kind of working the best for me on this review here. So onto the back portion of the bag. So my phone's in my hand, I can't really show you, but I have this little cheap phone clip that attaches into the Molly. So that way when I'm driving, I can kind of be hands-free, not be tempted to look at my phone, things like that. So I, I mount a little phone holder there, tape. Tape is always important. Get that in your bag. Key clips, you always come across keys. It's amazing how many keys you come across in this job. So I always have that extra, whether I'm putting my personal car keys on there while I'm out on patrol or I'm trying to keep someone's keys and not lose them. I keep it right there. Extra handcuffs in my bag. There are times when you just run into a ton of people and unfortunately a ton of people can't behave sometimes and they got to go to jail. So you just don't have enough of these handcuffs on you or in your bag. So these zip ties are nice. That's what these are for. These are zip tie cutters. I keep those there just in case, you know, we need to release someone from the scene and I have a little stylus for the computer. Now, I guess I should talk about the 511 bag a little bit. There's mesh up here and mesh up here, two pockets to carry things. There's Molly all over. The back of this is, I don't know what you would call that, the 
female or male side of Velcro. I'm not sure what you call that, but this side of the Velcro sticks to that. So whatever you wanna call that, it sticks. In my bag specifically, I don't use this pocket for anything but to tuck this strap into that and zip it when I'm closing or securing the bag. So what I keep up here is an extra earpiece. If we're at a scene or a festival or something like that and it's really loud, I keep my earpiece in there. And then probably a USB. Yep, a USB in case you need to get data on a call or something like that. Okay, the front of the bag, finally. This is gonna be the last portion of the bag. I think I'm gonna to have to do the exterior and those type of shots. I'll just do those at home, you know, outside or maybe in the office or something like that because it's, you're not gonna be able to see what you need to see in the dark out here. And I am running out of time, so I'll shoot that later. But the front of the bag is nice because it has even more molly than that vertical side of the bag that I just showed you. And I don't keep as much as I could up there but it is nice layout because you can reach right over and grab those things. So this is my front of the bag. I keep extra keys on another key holder, extra handcuffs, you can never have too many of those. And then a seatbelt cutter, which I, I rarely use this because I have a, a fairly sharp knife. Again, I did a video on that as well, but this is specifically a seat cutter. I mean, this is what that was built for. So you can go in, hook the seatbelt and just rip it through. So. This is useful and I do keep it in here in the event I need something more like this rather than just a knife. At the front of the bag, you know, unfortunately we gotta have lots of sharps containers nowadays. Uh, I have my Narcan. We won't get into a debate about that, but my Narcan's here. Yes, I know it's, you know, climate dependent and all that. So we move these inside in adverse weather conditions, but my Narcan is here so I don't lose it. Uh, plenty of to scale devices and what I mean by to scale devices is like rulers and things like that. So if you have like a, um, I don't know, a, a gunshot into a car or something like that, usually your evidence techs are going to come out on that. But in the event you have to make something to scale in a photograph, I have this ruler and that ruler there. That's probably from my detective days, my detective coming out in me. Put that back in. Uh, I have a little pad holder. You can never have enough of these either. This is great if you need somebody to explain something to you, show where something's at, or make, you know, draw a picture about what's going on. Or if you need to grab this and just write notes, you know, the good old fashioned way. I still have this in my bag and I still use this. Other things, you know, hand sanitizer, everybody's got that, a highlighter. This is a little USB light for your computer and then extra ammunition. I always keep magazines in, in different areas and whatnot. It's just, uh, I'm not gonna get into like a doomsday scenario, but you just never know where you may need to grab one. Okay, so the front of this bag is really nice. I've got my pens here. I've already shown you this. So there's several pockets here you can throw things into. And if I move this out of the way, I don't know if you can, how well you can see that, but there's another, another mesh pocket. And in this mesh pocket, I just keep evidence stuff. So uh, distilled water, hand warmers, tweezers are in there. Um, what else I got in there? Oh, that's I think that's it. Just those three items are in that mesh pocket. And I apologize, I know the lighting's horrible, but unfortunately this is the shift I'm on. I forgot to mention too while I'm at it, these gloves are great and you should never go without a good pair of gloves. These are like mechanics. I think a lot of people have these, but these gloves are just irreplaceable. So I keep you know, I think I have about four pairs stuck in this middle divider where I can just grab them out real quick if we have a medical scene that we need to hop out on, somebody's bleeding, or um, even if you have a subject in custody, you know, that has a disease, we've all ran into that, the gloves are right there. And I put enough in there to where everybody can have some because I don't want anybody touching anything that they shouldn't be touching, obviously. I guess in some, what I want to say is this is a tremendous bag. I love this bag. I just kind of, I don't wish, but you know, this bag was extremely useful in the past 10 years, but just as law enforcement moves forward, I don't know what these bags are gonna look like anymore. Probably more like a slim briefcase or some type of fabric sling bag or something like that because you just don't use forms and you have specialized units to take care of the evidence and, and all these other things are kind of going on depending on the size of your agency. Obviously that's understandable, but these bags, the big ones anyway, are just kind of going by the wayside, which if you want my opinion, extremely useful. This is the bag I'd buy if I had to buy a gear bag all over again.